Nice yeah. to meet you too. I I was very impressed with the film. I'd like to know what informed your script. Uh, the script was informed by a, a ton of research into various histories, uh, works of journalism, oral histories that the Kennedy Library store. They interviewed a lot of the uh, first person witnesses to this period of time and, they, and they've kept them over the library in Boston. Um, there's a lot written about it um, and so I kind of dove in and grew from all of it. So in a sense, did you take a shot into anecdotal stories? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I drew from, um, from, from a variety of different accounts written by people who were there, written by people who interviewed them, and then I, of course, filled in the blanks with some creative liberty and imagination, which is where the fun part comes in. What uh, inspired you to write a story? Uh, I've been fascinated by Jackie Kennedy my whole life. My mother was a big admirer of her. Uh, she saved all the newspapers and magazines. I used to look through them when I was a little kid. And uh, I'm just a student of politics and American history, and I've just always admired her. So whose, whose line was it that history is told from the perspective of the one who says it? Huh. Um, I, I think it's a sentiment that she uh, she believed in. Um, I'm not sure where the precise phrasing was mine or hers, but uh, it's uh, it's definitely she she understood that she could write her husband's legacy, and, uh, and and she set out to do that in the days after the assassination, in the way that she managed the funeral and in the interview that she gave uh, to Life magazine, and, and she she had a really astute understanding of how to use the power of the press and the power of imagery uh, to influence how people would, would, would look at her husband and remember. Was it difficult to fill in, fill out rather, all these historical personalities that were involved? Yeah, it's always tough to write about people who are really well known. Uh, but the, the beauty of Jackie is that she, in many ways, is a, big, is a mystery. People think they know her; they know her superficially. But very few people, I think, have managed to capture who she was as a human being. Well, thank you very much. For thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. How you doing? Good. How are you? Pretty good. What, what was the most difficult thing about squeezing uh, into one movie just a, a period that people were so familiar with? Well, I mean, people have done countless television shows, films, written probably hundreds of books about the Kennedy assassination. Um, so your, your challenge is that people think they know what happened during that period of time. Uh, but what I tried to do was by, by framing everything through her point of view, through Jackie's point of view, uh, create a fresh perspective on, on events that seem familiar, but, uh, you know, and a side of the story that hasn't been told yet. What was the most surprising thing that you learned about Jackie that you didn't know before? The biggest surprise for me was when I learned that she had, in fact, coined the Camelot mythology in the week after her husband's assassination. I thought that the Kennedy uh, administration had always been referred to as Camelot or from the time he was campaigning, and I didn't realize that she was the one who invented that, and she only did it after his death. Now, of course, you shot some of the scenes elsewhere, but some key scenes you shot right here in Washington. Did that make a big difference to you, and why did you choose to do that? Well, I think, you know, anytime you can kind of draw on the authenticity of a, of a real location, I think it infuses uh, the film with something you can't necessarily recreate on a soundstage. So I think it was, we, we came to Washington at the end of the, at the, end of the shoot um, and to do that funeral march outside and recreate it in the very places where it actually took place, I think was really special. What do you want people to come away from this film thinking about Jackie and thinking about your work? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope they come away with an appreciation for her extraordinary strength. Uh, you know, she, she went through an unimaginable horror. She lost her husband. She had to shepherd two young children through that. But she also had to sort of bear the grief of the entire nation on her shoulders. And she did that, and she helped the whole country heal. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, sir. Hi. Jason with WTOP. Um, one of the things I want to commend you on is, you know, so many biopics, I think they just try to bite off too much, and they try to tell the whole life story, and it's the trap. But I love that you took such a narrow slice of the four days and, you know, and then, you know, flash back to it a little bit. But, um, talk about sort of the decision to do that and, and focus on that, because that, you could have told a, a whole life story, but explain why that's more powerful. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I, think it's, I think it's really hard to try to tell the person, the I think it's really hard to tell, try to tell the story of a person's life by jamming everything that ever happened to them into one film. I think it's far more illuminating when it comes to their character and who they were to sort of pick 
a moment in time or a couple moments in time where they were going through a particularly intense crucible because oftentimes when we're under the most pressure that's when our real character shines through and clearly in this week it was one of the toughest periods in her life and, and, and people were able to see what she was made of. Was the framing device of the, the magazine interview, was that um, was that in the script from the start? Did you guys kind of add that afterwards? I thought I heard No, that, that was from the first draft onwards, yeah. I, I always thought that that interview was a good way to kind of bookend the film. Did I see that you used to be a senior producer on the, on the Today Show? I currently run the Today oh, Show, yeah. yeah. Well, okay. How much, uh, oh, well, there you go. Um, how much uh, do you think that sort of informed uh, those interview scenes? It's almost like a, a chess match with yeah. Billy Crude up and, and her yeah. and how much to reveal and all yeah. that. So how much do you think that sort of your life, you know? I, my, my, my primary job in life has always been as a journalist. So those were especially fun scenes to write. I, I can't say that every interview we do is that uh, entertaining and that much of a back and forth, but it, it definitely, uh, my my life experience definitely uh, informed that. And final question, um, what was it? The old uh, John Ford line in Liberty Valance when he says, you know, when the legend becomes fact, yeah. print the legend. Yeah. Compa you know, compare that in, in the Camelot terms. You know, how much of those interviews do you think was Jackie consciously myth building of yeah. the character? And how much do you think just just happened? You know, was it was it planned out? You think? I I, th I think she was incredibly savvy and knew exactly what she was doing and understood that this was her last opportunity to define how her husband would be remembered and. I think she uh, she came up with a really powerful metaphor in Camelot that has obviously stuck with us for decades. Why do you think that's the one she chose? You know, um, I don't know why. What she about Camelot myth, you know. I think I think uh, by making reference to something in popular culture like Arthurian legend, it sticks in people's minds far more so than if she had just listed a bunch of policy accomplishments. Uh, it just has it just has a greater emotional resonance. So. Congrats, sir! You definitely pulled the sword from that stone. So thank you, sir. <laughs> Appreciate it. Man of La Mancha would not have worked. Yeah. <laughs> You know, interesting, I've, uh, I'm a presidential geek, forgive me, so I, yeah. I visit the birthplaces. I mean, when I'm going to James K. Polk's house, you know I'm into it. And um, the interesting thing with your movie and with Jackie and how I was saying to him, she was still in her 30s. Yeah, still very young. young. Yeah. And this was going on. But the thing that was so important to the country and the world was that one picture on Air Force One. Yeah. You know, with the blood and yeah. everything was still on that pink dress. Yeah. And what strong message that sent to the rest of the Yeah. I, I, I think it, the, the strength that she displayed during this period of time, when you think about how young she was, when you think about the trauma that she endured, is truly extraordinary. And I think it puts her in the pantheon of American heroes, that she was able to help the country get through this and move forward in the way that she did while dealing with all of the personal pain that she was going through. I believe it was um, in the, one of the Caro LBJ books uh, where Lady Bird Johnson said, I couldn't cry at the funeral when I wanted to because Jackie wasn't crying. And if Jackie wasn't crying, I didn't have a right to cry. Yeah, I think she set the tone. I mean, I think the whole country was looking at her for cues on how to behave. Um, and I think she comported herself with such extraordinary dignity that, uh, you know, I think that's one of the many reasons why she's remembered so fondly to this day. Well, thank you very much. Thank nice you. Meeting you. Nice to meet you.